let's see, Clint. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> well done. Yeah, no problem. There uh, may be some boys, uh, my two daughters, uh, playing around the uh, time to time. But. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, well, I think that should be... That should be recording here. Okay, so welcome, Andrea. This is Marcin and Andrea. We're talking about OSC France and uh, a chance to set standards. So what happened, just for background here, what's happened in the history of the project, one of the earlier chapters yeah. was, that was Nikolai. He was getting involved with OSC Europe and doing OSC yeah. Germany. But really, as of present, we don't don't really have any formal standards of how we do this. So I think as we do this here, we should get clarity on that and, and set, set up something that others can follow as a pattern because we've had a lot of different requests of people to start chapters and a lot of chapters have formed in different places without really any clear direction. So uh -huh. this is a chance to do a better job and actually have the chapters, the vision would be to be core to the development of the Global Village construction set and to back up what's the mission of OSC to create the open source economy and how, I mean, I think the recent clarity is about the need for livelihood and that people actually do this for a job, for a right livelihood, rather, because of a lot of times the, the limit is people get involved and they pop out of... Uh, of getting involved because they need to make a living. Uh, it boils down to where are you putting your energy? Is this work actually supporting you? Or is it something you do as a part-time thing and then you really spend most of your life pumping energy back into the old economy? So we're about transformation and trying to create a new economy. So I think the proper framework to discuss is the mass creation of right livelihood. And to that effect, yeah. the direction that we're going to is is the levels of where OSC has gone so far. And so far, it's been a lot of development, a lot of different proofs of concepts on the technology part. And that's working well, very well. But the pro problem is it's not scaling as we would like to because of taking the things to the final step where people can actually gain a meaningful livelihood from this to which we want to address that issue fu fundamentally. So the product designs are there, but none of it has been taken to the level of 100% where these are real products that people can make a living with and create whole economies around it, just like has already been happening with software. That succeeded. Many people are getting their livelihoods from it. I mean, there's many billions of dollars of economy behind open source yeah. software like the backbone of the internet, there's multi-billion dollar economies. And t t for example, today, uh, Red, not Red Hat, but, but Linux in general, they the, just a recent report came out that the value of the contributions to that project has been $5 billion in terms of user contributions with correspondingly much more of value that's generated through the product. So many, many billions of dollars of economic activity happening around that. And how do we do that for for open source ecology, the next level, which is open hardware. I think yeah. by now we've seen the 3D printer, which is actually, I think, the only majorly successful case where actually a whole industry has been changed by the open source RepRap project, including the biggest proprietary guys which built upon the RepRap project, um, the two bigger ones, which are MakerBot and, and Ultimaker, but now there's other like Lulzbot, there's there's Prusa mm -hmm. that yeah. have also a very significant market share of a of a market that's approaching the uh, that market is approaching like the billion dollar market. I mean it's not billion yet, but it's many millions right now, hundreds of millions about um, mm -hmm. to date. 
So the question is, how do we create that kind of a pattern of, let's call it the mass creation of right livelihoods through the open source economy? So our latest effort on that is taking the products to the final level of development, which is first you've got product design, and then after that you've got productization and, and real products that are entering the marketplace. So the so the product development part, which is always what it's been about, a lot of people have been ideologically aligned, but a lot of times at the end of the day, what do we do to make a living? That's the critical question. So right now we have, uh, we're switching to the, you know, the learnings of many, many years, you know, since 2008, when the Global Village Construction Set word was coined. Since then, we are going to the enterprise level much more deliberately. So to give you an example, the, the 3D printer, the brick press, the tractor are going to be some of the priorities that we're going to be taking next year in terms of enterprise. Right now, currently, we have a master's student, Storbjorn, who is in Sweden, Norway, who will be developing the 3D printer as what we call a distributive enterprise. Okay. Which means... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, just um, uh, as a... As a I mean, uh, our point in uh, in France is uh, today we are a group of people. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of us is uh, not uh, is actually working uh, somewhere else. So we are doing uh, uh, this part of the um, this part of the um, what we call the association is a no profit uh, group. Mm -hmm. We founded the no, no profit group, uh, um, uh, and we do it uh, as a as a of the time from work mm -hmm. and uh, indeed the next step will be how we bring uh, uh, um, the, the activity to be our main activity and uh, and therefore uh, to, to be able to work for uh, developing the global village construction set uh, and uh, have uh, the possibility to, to live with that. So what, one of the main questions probably uh, to we, uh, uh, we should either uh, uh, make a, a, a business model for the product before to, to actually develop it, mm -hmm. and therefore to uh, evaluate the, the market uh, uh, and the market interest for the product for, uh, to be able to develop it. So we actually put this part a, a little bit... Um, uh, on a side, but we also considered uh, several aspects of the of the market uh, plan uh, for uh, for the solar concentrator, and this is why we actually started with the solar concentrator, as we we thought it was critical uh, mm -hmm. in the moment to, to to be able to to have a source of energy alternative to uh, to petrol to fossil fuel uh, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, so the next step will be indeed uh, we, we plan actually to create uh, cooperatives uh, uh, around uh, the association, the non-profit uh, association, so that the non-profit association can keep uh, uh, develop uh, uh, in uh, in uh, uh, with the vol voluntary uh, uh, with the volunteers. Uh, uh, the, the global village construction set, and uh, but benefit from partners that will be the cooperatives, and the cooperatives will focus on uh, uh, bringing the services to the final customers, to the final users. Mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, as you said, as you mentioned, uh, the open source, the open source companies, uh, uh, we, uh, the cooperatives uh, provide. So the, the main objective of the, the cooperative will be uh, providing the kit or uh, mm -hmm. after sale services or uh, uh, customization um, or added, added value features that uh, we are not going to develop uh, uh, in the association itself. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> 
I agree with you that uh, so this is the one of the main challenges. Indeed, uh, we are already uh, we are already uh, we have uh, some difficulties uh, not having uh, anyone paid uh, full time for uh, for our association. Mm -hmm. um, so we we are planning uh, on. Uh, actually employing at least one person who can uh, deal with the, 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 the communication, uh, some uh, coordination, and uh, applying for uh, uh, funding uh, in uh, uh, national funding or uh, uh, European mm -hmm. uh, funding access. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> so... Uh, uh, so you say that you, you are going to focus on uh, the on the pre pre compressor, the three D printer, and the tractor. Yeah, that's uh, because those three are closest. I mean, definitely. So the idea is on a three D printer because it's a mature technology. We're exploring the very particular aspect of can we because this technology is open source and mature, and the market is very large. Can we use that as a funding mechanism for people to do other research and development? So, for example, Alec Higgins, who is on site here, he will be using the 3D printer workshop as a means to to support the R&D that he's doing on, on integrated agriculture. So, the question is, can all of us get together? I mean, I will be committing a lot of people, I mean, pretty much get a full working team towards the... 3D printer so that we make a very good product and document the enterprise aspect. That means how do we teach that? Well, how do we produce it? I mean, for us, the model is very simple. We've had a lot of success with the workshop model. So the basic economics would be as little as you know, 12 people, or take a number, 12 people sign up for a workshop. They pay $300 on top of the materials to build themselves a 3D printer in a single day. So it's one is the optimal streamlining of the build process, redesigning. Materials Sorry? Materials included. No, it materials. Is, uh, just no, no. no, materials will. Our goal for the material side is about 500. But okay. uh, so people pay X dollars over the top of the material cost. For a really high performance, I mean, so we're going to focus on getting the high quality, reliability, and the purpose, which is both to prototype OSC materials, like including rubber, like printing in rubber, so O-rings and seals for hydraulic motors and water systems and so forth. Uh, but, but yeah, prototyping slash production slash sale slash education machine as in our model is not about building machines, but about building people, building livelihoods. So we can use an existing mature open source technology to make that happen. So our goal is to, uh, I mean, show the power of the open source, which is if that technology does exist in the open source, then the next step is the distributive enterprise level, meaning we document how we run this workshop so that others can replicate the same model. Mm -hmm. So we can teach a number of people here. Uh, by the end of 2016, I'd like to have a few people, like three or four, that are fully supported, not like by foundations or anything, but by the fact that they're running workshops. So we make that model very open. We encourage everyone to copy it. Uh, just like in a true name of open source, because nobody at present is doing the fa doing the concept of actually teaching the distribution of a certain enterprise. So yeah. that enterprise level, the distributed enterprise, it's something that we're talking about. I'm not hearing anybody else talk about that. I mean, you've heard of things like proprietary consortia or franchises, but all of them are not open source or they have strings attached. This is about, from one side, you can do it totally independently because we document it. On the other side, we use it in-house to develop, to, to fund our R&D. So, so 3D printer is low-hanging fruit, 
but we've already seen commercial success to some level with the brick press. When we ran that workshop, we were able to pull in actually $10,000 from a weekend build where we built a single machine over like three days. We sold the machine and we charged tuition for people to participate in that. So the revenue model is product sale combined with tuition for people getting immersion skills training. So that kind of model of a workshop is consistent with our mission of creating people. Because we're not creating products, we're actually still falling under the realm of education. We're training entrepreneurs. We happen to be producing things at the same time. But that model, I think, can be scaled. And because uh, some of the fundamental issues about our mental model of the way the world works is part of that dependence and lack of autonomy and the global geopolitics revolve largely around material security. I mean, the huge economies that come from material scarcity and the artificial control of materials, huge corporations, centralization versus wealthy communities everywhere. Um, if we take that responsibility to train more people, we believe we can create a better world. So that's our model. We we want to not just make open source products, but open source products that build the people along with them. And that's part of the cultural shift that we need Absolutely. to create anyway. Uh, so it's so this model is consistent with all our, all our values of being open source and also focus on the real thing, which is about training people, reskilling people, so that community-based manufacturing can be a model that's highly replicable. And in fact, I mean, I see it as... I mean, if you look at down the, his, down the road of history, as tools get better, information, like the open source fabrication capacity improves, whole tool chains for CNC manufacturing and automation, they come in place, I think it's going to be just a matter of time before community manufacturing is responsible for a very significant portion of what people produce. So... Yeah, uh, I, I hope so. Yeah. And and I do believe on this, uh, indeed, uh, distributed uh, manufacturing. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. And some of the main missing things are the lack of open source tool chains. To give you an example, I mean, you know, local motors with their 3D printed car made headlines on, wow, look at this, open source process, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, none of that, like 0% of it is open source. The tool chain is entirely proprietary. The machines they used are proprietary. Yeah. Uh, I mean, their designs are non-commercial. They're not, they're not open source by the uh, Oshawa standards. So imagine we created the whole infrastructure fully open source, uh -huh. and then we can have anybody participate. Because as you see, that's not a replicable model at this time. So once we enable the tools, and for which I'd like to enlist the chapters and all the people going forward is right now, I mean, FreeCAD as a basic tool chain for CAD is robust or mature enough that that can suffice and we can start getting the proper CAD, proper engineering analysis, simulations, um, and then CAM, the computer aided manufacturing toolpath tool chains to connect that to open source production machines. So that's, I mean, that's the frontier to attain. Um, so as we collaborate, we should be talking about, like with the chapters, okay, so one is, is creating the different specific machines, but more important is the tool chains that anybody can use. So I think the, the very nice part that we can talk about is const the construction set approach, which is the nature of the Global Village construction set, in that, for example, if we're doing the tractor, we have a few critical library parts. Like, okay, here are the frames. Here are the engine units, the power cubes. Here are the modular wheel units. We've developed all of that. So now we can start putting that as libraries into FreeCAD and then further getting the machining tool chains behind that. But basically developing the whole open source tool chains that right now are a major, major block. Um, I would suggest that for OSC France, and I want, I want to get your ideas. I mean, the, the question is, what kind of commitment do you want to contribute to the overall OSC project? The Global Village Construction said, and, and I think that can start with a charter, team charter. We've actually done some work on what a charter would look like. Um, so some of our other working groups, we have developed a charter where I would suggest that for OSC France, you basically get with your team and c commit to a statement, okay, this is the charter for our next year. And I think we should do that as an autonomous thing where 
you can make certain commitments and then we can evaluate that. It can be self-evaluating in a sense that you write a charter, here are promises, here's our resources, here's what we commit to, here's our governance and so forth. Um, yeah. And then at the end of the year, we take a look at that. Okay, did you achieve any milestones? What are you actually contributing to the to the solid development? Like you guys have um, are the only chapter that have created a very significant core part of the Global Village construction set, the prototype of the solar concentrator. That's really good. And um, we should see where we want to take that. I mean, is that uh, so? So further. What are the next milestones? What's what yeah. is its performance right now? What are your goals to and price points that you'd like to get to? Yeah, uh, so yeah, Kim Charter is a very good uh, starting point. Uh, we we did a similar exercise uh, starting from uh, last year. We committed uh, within ourselves. Uh, we published on our website our mm -hmm. commitment, uh, the timeline, and uh, and the go and the uh, and the first product as a goal. Uh, and uh, uh, and so by achieving it, we we were we were uh, actually it, it also increased uh, morale uh, within the team and um, and increase also credibility uh, by achieving the goal within the time frame uh, the given time frame. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, to engage is. Uh, Obviously, as uh, we are a team of volunteers, mm -hmm. it uh, strictly uh, um, variates based on the possible contribution of the, mm -hmm. of the team members. Right. And, uh, in, we we grow uh, much uh, this year uh, thanks to the visibility we had uh, of uh, of this first uh, product we 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 built, yeah. and also the. the Partnerships uh, with other as association that we built, uh, but still uh, we are uh, we are uh, exploring how we can integrate the new uh, people uh, that are interested to join in our uh, to join uh, our projects, uh, or uh, also to develop their project and develop them uh, as a people uh, as a project coordinators, project leaders. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, also, as you said, uh, uh, yeah, FreeCAD. Uh, with just a quick note on FreeCAD, we had uh, uh, we had um, our uh, our expert on that. Uh, actually, for open source ecology, the, we had a couple of uh, 3D designers, uh, and uh, but one of them. Uh, actually fall, follow the whole uh, project uh, uh, from scratch to the end. Uh, he, uh, we developed everything uh, under FreeCAD as well, but uh, he found uh, much more difficult uh, to make uh, changes. So uh, making changes is actually more uh, time consuming than uh, other, uh, other software. Uh, so we are exploring other uh, uh, collaborate uh, 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 CAD tools. There are none of them open source. There are some that are free. Um, and uh, Fusion is one of them. But we are also committed to redesign once it's finished, once it's closed, <coughs> once it's uh, completed. Uh, we are uh, committed to redesign everything under uh, FreeCAD. Uh, so that we have uh, the, the final uh, uh, source uh, also on uh, on uh, open source uh, software. Mm -hmm. But indeed, it, it means uh, doing the double job of uh, of designing, and uh, so it's uh, ad additional re human resources uh, that we employ. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and also there is uh, another concept uh, that, that that may be interesting to lobby uh, as you as you spoke about uh, the the library parts uh, as a, as a big component uh, is uh, is indeed uh, very interesting to share but also as a smaller component so if we are able to uh, get down to the to the uh, single part uh, and uh, 
as an open source, open hardware community overall uh, create uh, uh, some standard uh, that, that uh, we can share uh, with the Fab Labs uh, or uh, mm-hmm. with the open source ecology uh, uh, overall uh, the world uh, mm-hmm. and therefore it, it will become easier to make, uh, to make uh, uh, interchanging uh, components that uh, you can reuse on different products uh, uh, or uh, you can disassemble you can replace it uh, easily from uh, one product to the other. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And uh, we, we have an expert on that uh, uh, that uh, may may be able to uh, help uh, to to bring this concept uh, from uh, from one of the bigger enterprises uh, uh, of uh, of cars, uh, but uh, he's. Uh, Engaged uh, with the open source, uh, so he's uh, rethinking uh, how to make uh, this uh, uh, kind of a library for uh, the open source world. So we mm-hmm. are also working on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, maybe the thing that we can talk about is for OSC France to to set up the standards is is starting with a project charter. And uh, let me just I just shared that with you. Or, if you want to take a look at this, uh, put it in the comment box here. Uh, we can try that. The idea being to start formalizing some of the agreements. And, and the questions would be, as we go forward on this, um, I think what a worthwhile thing is to... I'm going to start a page on a wiki called... Uh, first of all, like OSC France should... I mean... On the wiki, we keep a lot of um, different logs, but you should, I mean, for one, like as, as we go forward, some of the basic infrastructures, I mean, also put yourself up as a page on the OSC wiki, and we yeah. can possibly, like, 